started off in the boat business. So the boat's always been a big fantasy of mine. And to get into power boating, I'm a big drag racer. So that's how the power boating got started. And it just led from one thing to the, to the next. My brother owns a 41 Apache. And the reason I decided to go with Apache, this is my second one, but the reason I decided to go with Apache was the mystique of having very limited models out there. I didn't want to be like someone else having a cigarette or an Outer Limits, having other models out there that everybody else can have. These are very limited models. When I found that out, that's what drew me towards Apache. Uh, when I found out he had only designed 24 47s and there was only like 10 or 12 out there that you could actually put your hands on, made it very unique for me and that's what I wanted. Something unique that when I go on a poker run, you'd see maybe one or you'd be the only one out there. So how it started off, we decided to go ahead and build something new. I wanted Apache, Mark McManus at Apache, to build me something unique. Um, I still wanted to keep his heritage of a heavy ride, all Kevlar built boat. It wasn't gonna be the fastest boat out there, but it'd be probably the fastest out in seven, eight foot seas. So that's how we started. We started off with the hull and deck that he's got there and built it from the ground up with new style engineering now, because his last 47s were built back in 1991. This is the first 2006. 47 he's built in the last 15, 16 years, new in the new technology, laying with the boats a little bit differently, but just keeping his weight and, and hull design still the same way. And that's how we came out with it. So I wanted something modern. Um, I, you know, I had a graphic company come in and come up with a new paint scheme that you see behind me here uh, with Apache. And it being his most drastic, most radical model that he's ever even attempted to build, we went ahead and called it Spirit of Apache. Uh, just so everybody could relate what could be done to their own boat using this as a model. This took everything to the extent that you could even build anything to, and that's how we start off with this particular boat. The paint schedule behind this, the boat has to start off in white, and there's about eight or nine layers of graphics that are done through the boat that uh, has to be laid on. So um, what you have to do is lay it white, then you lay different colors, and one color overlays with the other is how you come up with a lot of different you know, uh, effects that you see, a lot of depth into the paint. You see a lot of reality, just in the spear and the grain and in the, in the wood. A lot of detail uh, oriented when the painter did it. What we tried to do is, again, having the mystique of the Apache being one of the only ones out there with one, um, I wanted to do something special with the Michael trailer, that being the only model that you could use, because the boat's a 25,000 pound boat, so you only have one choice of trailer, Michael, that would hold that kind of weight. So we start off with a new trailer, and what we did is we custom painted it to match the boat, which very rarely anybody does. Starting from the tire cover in the front, made to match with the Apache logo, Spirit of Apache, and the whole fade carrying throughout the boat. Uh, we put a lot of different features, like a water tank on the boat. Uh, we put little runway lights underneath each side that illuminates the bottom of the boat when you're traveling with it. Um, the whole background scene of Apache carries through the trailer, the same 47 on the trailer. Uh, then we come back here to the tires where you see the custom skirt that we made. Getting to the fenders, what we did is we wanted to come up with something unique, so we made a custom fiberglass fender out of a mold that goes over top the, stop, the stock steel fender. In case you blow a tire, you still have the coverage there. But to give it a lower profile look, to cover up the tires, just give it a different look. We made a mold and that's how we came up with what you see right there. Another thing I like to point out is a lot of little features that you see on the outside. You'll see a lot of my, all my equipment on the side of the boat is all black. What we did is everything is standard, usually stainless steel, chrome polish, where you see everything here from cleats to oil fills to fuel fills to the running lights to the, fuel, uh, to the fender guards. Those are all been black powder coated and heat treated uh, to give it a little bit more racier look, but also give it a protective coating that doesn't require a lot of maintenance. There's no polishing on this boat. Besides washing, drying, and waxing it, there's no polishing. The aluminum or the stainless usually becomes a, a, you know, a problem. And the same thing with the, with the hinges. Everything's been black powder coated. You come around here to the transom, you'll see still the paint fade here. You'll see the custom exhaust. Again, we have black powder coated. Not having to deal with, again, the stainless polish after everyone having to come back here and polish everything. Um, the same thing with the trim tabs. We had everything black powder coated, everything to match. Just little details as the lifting rings behind there where they've black powder coated and then baked the Apache name on the back of it. Uh, what's going to show this boat different than any other boat built out there is details that you don't see. You can't see the boat in half an hour, you've got to spend six or seven hours looking at it. Probably one of the biggest features that you'll see that's never been duplicated on any other boat out there is the boat has a crown. Just like anything, a boat has a crown from beam to beam. What you'll notice on my custom dive platform 
it has the same crown of the boat. You see how it curves around the transom with the same features that you do on, on, on the uh, transom of the boat. The dive platform is crowned around. The way that starts off, you've got to have a three and a half inch thick piece of aluminum built out of one piece and they start shaving it. So it starts off three inches in the middle and three inches on the side. That's the only way you get it to crown over because you can't bend a big four foot piece of aluminum. So you got to mill it down. So there's about 80, 90 man hours of work and about fourteen, fifteen thousand dollars later you come up with this crown, real unique look. It gives it a nice shape contour to the boat. That's the little details that you'll see throughout the boat as we, we go along. Getting back to the boat here, we're talking about the transom. Again, dealing with the best of the best, we went with the number six dry sump, which is the strongest drive Mercury makes. Uh, we've got the Latham steering, tie bar setup, which is the biggest and best that you could use. Little features like this that you won't see in a lot of other boats. This is a smog system that we have on the boat that ventilates the crankshaft to help save the rings and the pistons of the motors when you're running these big high horsepower motors. You know, getting back to the number six drives, we've got to follow it up with crash boxes, the new titanium crash boxes, because we're limited with what we can use because of the horsepower and the torque that the motors make. So we've got to go with crash boxes and we have to shut them on and off to be able to put them in and out of gear. Um, little details like the, um, you know, getting back to the details that you'll see on the boat from the cleats that are all been blacked out again for no maintenance. Little water things here with a quick release. You don't have to deal with the hoses that are in the back. When you see the transom going across, it's a custom anchor light. We could have gone with a little $20, $30 Perco anchor light. We made a mold out of the anchor light. Also be able to shine down on the platform, which shows the emblem that we had Apache make and set it into the transom. Now we're in the engine compartment where we start off with 665 cubic inch motors. Uh, we've got PSI blowers, we've got dual 1200 dominator carburetors. We stay with the carburetor system and the MSD ignition to try to keep the boat simple. Again, using my drag race history here, I'm trying to keep the boat simple, easy to diagnose when you're out in the ocean. There's only two, three things that could go wrong with it, so it's easy to fix something if there is an issue. Well, the whole stringer system's all designed out of Kevlar. That's always been Apache's forte. Everything Kevlar wrapped in carbon fiber, so you get strength, rigidity when you're out there running the boat. and and the bigger seas that the Apaches are designed for. But you'll see common stuff rigged by Apache where just to make it user friendly, again, all the pump system designed on one side, five or six screws, the whole panel comes out, easy to access everything. Uh, you see the, the, the battery system there, everything's very easy accessible. It's usually the problem that you have with a triple engine boat, you can't get to anything. You'll see now with the engines being 665 cubic inch PSI blower driven, there are 93 octane motors, which limits us on how much horsepower we can make. These motors have generated 1,300 horsepower, over 1,200 foot-pounds of torque on 93 octane fuel. That levels the playing field for anything. Uh, you go ahead and put 110 octane in it, you can see powers upwards of 16, 1,700 horsepower. What I'm trying to show you here is a little bit of the detail that you'll see in the boat. These are laser water jetted sea strainer covers, which you'll see also have over 1,000 LEDs throughout the boat that'll show different lighting through the laser and water jetted uh, cut. They're showing Apache power boats and the little insignia of their logo throughout the boat. And throughout the, uh, the engine compartment, we again have LEDs lighting from underneath the boat to illuminate the boats underneath. Another unique feature that I missed to, to say about the engines, I have stainless steel oil pans. Something again, not used in the boating industry, more uh, covered in the drag racing industry. And anything in the salt water needs to have something made out of stainless. You just your weak point is the oil pan. These again are made by Morosa Racing. They designed them for me, all out of stainless steel oil pans that I have in the boat. Again, showing you a unique feature designed in my 47 Apache is the fuel system distribution block that you here have on this one side. Again, easy to get to, change the valves. It's got a three tank setup, but it has one lever that you shift on the fly. One of the unique features that he's filming now is those custom made all coordinated scoops for the engines. Being big horsepower engines, you need to be able to have air in the engine compartment. But what you'll see throughout the boat is the whole scheme goes through the interior and out the transom of the boat. Through the canvas, through the scoops. Uh, the boat doesn't look the same from either side. You look at the boat from the port side, has a different paint scheme on it. You look from the starboard side, it looks from a different scheme from that side because different color combinations that they have. What you have is I got about three different setup cockpit here. Uh, depending on what kind of boating you're going to be doing throughout the day. Right now we've got it set up where you can sit down to do wide open runs where you can get in here, get nice and snug, be able to spread your legs and grip the handles. Now you got two different height restrictions here. There's for a little low, lower, shorter guy, center of gravity. You can go ahead and remove the pins, put them in a different position and go to a different height setup. So if you got a guy that's four or five inches taller, 
needs to be a little bit more comfortably set up, you can turn the handles around and get a little bit higher, you know, holding on the boat there. Another feature that it has is these items right here, these bolsters, remove. And these will lay out of the boat, out of the way, allowing you to have the idea of this feature is to be able to have a complete bench seat. So both of these will be removed. There's a spot up in the bow where they're, they'll go in and they'll lock in place and you basically have a full bench seat. So right now you got it in the stand-up position so you can be like the front, the driver and the, and, the, and the crew chief guy in the front. So now you can stand up and still hold on and feel like you're just as safe as the driver and the co-pilot. Right. Now here's showing you the third and final position that we have in the rear bench seat set up where it becomes one big bench seat for the ladies when they get aboard the boat and you have a lot more room in the boat getting the bolsters out of the way. Another setup in the cockpit also you can remove the handles and you have another quick release. We got these throughout the boat. Simply pop in and then you can stand behind the driver the co-pilot and hold on. Again you got one on each side, one behind the driver and one behind the co-pilot. We also have a neat cockpit table designed right off the dive platform that also slides in here when you're out there lounging through the day you can set your drinks your, and everything is adjustable to the, the height of how the boat is sitting in the water, the level of the boat. But what you'll see here in the cockpit is the first 47 ever designed this way is we got a wider cockpit. On, a, on these power boats, we're limited to the beam that you have on the boat. You're talking about only eight foot beam. What you have here is we've got about 10 inches more cockpit because the way the new stringer setup was set up, where it's all Kevlar rolled, allowing for us another 10 inches of room in the cockpit. Another unique feature that you're looking at here is the dash setup on the 47 Apache. Again, being a 2006 model, I wanted to keep the old Apache heritage, which shows the two tier system of gauges. We still incorporated that into the, the new Apache that we built here. Also having different levels for your instrumentation, be able to see easy. Again, the black powder coating that you see throughout the boat, again, for no maintenance of the polishing. You'll see everything, and the gauges that you're looking at are all autometer racing gauges. A lot of the marine boats, you'll see Lavorsi gauges. This is top of the line racing gauges that you can buy on the market today. All carbon fiber, all custom built for the boat by Autometer. With different knock sensors, all carbon fiber. You got triple gauges. We've got a total of 36 gauges on the boat to show you all the instrumentation that you need. From temper uh, transmission temperature gauges to vacuum gauges to boost gauges. Well, we monitor about 10 different things in the boat at all times when we're running the boat. Again, getting back to my drag racing history, you always want to have a backup or a spare to everything. We've got dual navigation, we've got dual GPSs, we've got dual compasses, uh, we've got dual of everything. Even if we lose a gauge, the way they're wired, you can simply flip a switch and the other gauge will read the different engine that you're trying to monitor in case you happen to lose a gauge. You've got a David Clark uh, intercom system throughout the boat to be able to entertain the guests that you have in the boat and be able to talk from captain to co-pilot in the boat when you're running. Again, from the custom switches in the panel that were all made and powder coated, the little carbon fiber, you know, helicopter switches that you see in the modern day boats now, the way they're built. All Latham controls here to the left and your throttles to the right. Talking about the sound system we have in the boat, again, everything being top quality out of the Apache factory there. Here's the sound system, uh, just tens and tens of man hours mounting speakers that you don't see any bolts, no seams, no grills, everything mounted from the rear and sealed boxes, just, it's just a unique system. It's got a thousand watts digital Memphis belt, top of the line stuff that you could get, more or less in car audio designed for the boat. Yeah, little step features throughout the boat that are custom inserted into the side to be able to access the dash, access the side of the boat when you're boarding or getting on and off the boat. Here we got an easy hatch system to be able to get into the boat. They all have a little insert where you have to duck down. This is the only one ever cut out into the dash, incorporated into the boat to make it easy access to the cabin that the boat has. Now we're inside the cabin of the 47. This has got a, what they call a half cabin, utilizing half of the boat, of the bow that you're using. Uh, again, getting back to the stringer system now designed in 2006, allow it to make the rib system inside the cabin a little bit thinner and laying layers of Kevlar and carbon fiber throughout the boat. Again, making the cabin wider and taller. Here you'll see the, the wiring, which is usually the mystique of the Apaches. Just three months of one guy in here in the cabin wiring the boat from Monday through Friday from 8 to 5. Uh, you just see everything. You've got 25 bundles of wire. The same wire is in the same position in the bundles that it is in the bow of the boat as it is in the stern of the boat. This is just a little custom cooler here so you can you know, do your boating and take your drinks with you. You can remove it in and out of the boat. Also, we got all the safety issues in the boat which I can show you throughout. 
So I got the five person Winlow uh, life vest, uh, uh, life man boat above the boat. Right here, quick, easy access right inside the cabin. Pull one cord, throw it out. And you got all the amenities to be able to survive out there for two or three days. Okay, continue with the half cabin of the boat. You're getting now to the bow part of it where you go ahead and see a locker on each side, one for clothes, another one for different amenities that you're gonna bring throughout a trip when you go on a three or four day poker run. And the nice thing what we did is we utilized the whole boat, only being a half cabin boat, the rest of the boat we've used for storage. In the center, you'll see the, the fuel tank, which again is, you know, has fabric on top of this. You can utilize the rest of the bow different compartments to hold your um, spots, to hold your spare parts, all your spare props. Uh, remember the boat doesn't have a key, so there's your spare key up in the front, which is the steering wheel. Again, try to utilize the whole bow. You see your different boxes that we've purchased from Snap-on, have all our tools, all our spare pumps. We've got about five different uh, compartments up in front here that carries all our spare equipment. The nice unique thing about the boat, everything has its own compartment. So when you're out there running out in seven, eight foot seas, everything has their own latches, everything has their own position throughout the boat. Again, different spotlight mounts for the spotlight, all your tool mounts, all your spare equipment, everything has its own position in the boat. The 47 was something that we picked there at the end. It's, it's been a great thing. This boat with triple 1300 horsepower, 47 feet long that weighs 23,000 pounds, runs 116 to 118 miles an hour. So that was a nice feature about going with Apaches. I got the best of both worlds. I've got the heavy weight out there to be able to run in five, six, seven foot seas and still be able to run 116, 118 miles an hour. It was a pleasure doing business with Mark over at Apache and, and coming out with a one of a kind piece. My enjoyment basically was building